Hi, it's Adam from WeViewed, and welcome to another episode in the series Build with WeViewed. In today's digital age, recommendation systems have become an essential component of many online applications and services. From product recommendations to content suggestions, these systems help users discover new things and make informed decisions every day. In this video, we're going to build a simple recommendation system using WeViewed, a purpose-built open source vector database. Let's try it out together. Point your browser over to bookrex.weviate.io and type in something that you want to learn about. The books that are surfaced will contain semantically relevant suggestions based on your query. These semantic relationships are found through approximate nearest neighbor, search on vector embeddings associated between your query, and the book details, like the author, the title, and the description. This way, we're not just judging a book by its cover. To build this project, we're going to create an instance of a Weviate cluster using the Weviate Cloud Console. We'll create embeddings for about 7,000 books from a Kaggle dataset, connect to a large language model hosted on OpenAI, and then I'll walk through the Next.js application doing semantic search over the dataset to surface those semantically related books to you. As always, here at Weviate, we love open source. And so we've made this example available to you on GitHub and Replit. We're excited to see what you build yourself with this sample. And just a heads up, some of the code in this video may be out of date by the time you watch it, so keep an eye on the Git repo for the latest changes. If this sounds like an interesting project to you, let's go build it right now. The first thing we'll do is register on Weviate Cloud Services or WCS. It's super easy and will only take you a minute or two. To get to WCS, point your browser to console.weviate.cloud. And if you need, pause the video to sign up for an account. Once you're logged into Weviate Console, we'll create a new cluster. For this example, we can use the free cluster tier. Give your cluster a memorable name, make sure enable authentication is set to yes, and then when you're done reviewing the details, go ahead and click create. Give this a bit of time and let WCS deploy your cluster. Then we'll take note of the cluster URL and the API key for your Weviate instance. When ready, click details on our newly created cluster. This will create an expanded view of the cluster. Go ahead and copy the cluster URL and save it in a text file or notes file so that you can reference it later. And now for the API key, back in WCS, click API keys and then copy the admin key. Save it in that same text file for reference later. And we're done with setting up our Weviate cluster. We'll also need an API key from OpenAI so that we can use their model to generate our embeddings to do semantic search. Note that since we're using an OpenAI model, each time you make a call to create an embedding or to query the vector database, there will be a small charge on your API key. If you already have an API key from OpenAI, you can use that in this project too. If you don't have an API key yet, Go ahead and register for an account on openai.com. Once you're logged in, select API. Then go to your avatar at the top right of the screen, select View API Keys, create a new secret key, and then give it a name of your choice. And finally, go ahead and create it. Copy the key and put it into your notes file for reference later. And this should be everything. Let's go ahead and make sure that we actually have the source code now. If you're watching this in Replit, you'll likely have already cloned the template and you're ready to go. If you're watching this on YouTube or you want to build this locally, you can find the link to the Git repository in the description below. Clone the repository by downloading the zip from GitHub or cloning it in your shell environment. When you have the files locally, go ahead and open up the project in your editor of choice. Before we get into creating our embeddings, let's go and set up our environment. We need to put the cluster URL and the API keys into our environment variables. If you're building this locally, you can use your editor of choice to put them in a .env file. You can copy the .env.sample into a new .env file. Use the variable names as referenced in the file and change the placeholders with your values. If you're building this in Replit, you can pull up the secrets tool on the bottom left of the screen and insert your environment variables there instead. Just make sure to use the same names as those referenced in the .env.sample. Awesome. So our environment is set up. Let's get going with populating the vector database with the books dataset and their vector representations. As mentioned earlier, we'll be using a dataset from Kaggle. 
It contains about 7,000 books with details like the ISBN number, the description, a link to the book cover, and more. If you're interested in reading more about the dataset in Kaggle, you can find the link in the description below. There's a folder called Data Pipeline in our repository that has two scripts and the Kaggle dataset. This data is stored in a file called 7k-books-kaggle.csv. Feel free to pause the video and take a look through it. One of the scripts, populate.py, is responsible for creating vectors and storing those vectors in WeV8. Let's look at populate.py in greater detail. First, we create a WeV8 client object that receives the WeV8 cluster URL, the WeV8 API key, and the OpenAI API key. In case the script was run before, we delete any pre-existing schema called book, just to you know, keep the database fresh. You probably don't want to do this in production, but for this sample, we do it to make sure our data is consistent between runs. Then we create a schema for our books. The schema contains configuration details for how we want to vectorize the data. As you can see, we are using the text to vec OpenAI vectorizer, and in the module configuration, we're using ADA02 as the foundation model to generate our embeddings. Finally, we'll iterate through each row in our CSV dataset to create vectors for each book. And we use WeV8's batch creation API to create the vector embeddings and to store the embeddings and related data objects in the WeV8 cluster. Okay, so now that you know how this works, let's run it. To do that, we of course need to install some dependencies. Set up a Python virtual environment for these dependencies and then run pip install r requirements.txt in our terminal to install the official WeV8 Python client, along with several other dependencies needed for these scripts to run. If you're in Replit, I think these should automatically be installed into the REPL. Then run python data pipeline populate.py. When it finishes, you'll have data in your WeV8 cluster and we can begin doing some fun and interesting searches over it. With the data in the vector database, let's run a simple semantic search over our embeddings in WeV8 and get a better understanding of how the data is sent back to us as a result of the query. There's a script called search.py in the data pipeline directory. It demonstrates a semantic search query. Again, to interact with WeV8, we create a WeV8 client object. Then we create an object called near text that lists several concepts that we want to do our search against in the vector database. Now the search is not going to look for exact matches, but rather semantically related concepts to those in our list. The query is executed against the WeV8 client as shown on screen, and the results are then printed to screen. Feel free to change some of the concepts in near text and run the script several times just to get an understanding of what the responses look like. Running the script should be as easy as running populate.py. In your shell, run python data pipeline search.py. Looking through the results, you should see a large object sent back with a list of books deeply nested in the response. As you can see, these book results should be semantically similar to those in the near text concepts from the query. All right, now that we know how we can interact with WeV8 to find semantically similar items, I'm going to show you how the Next.js application uses this to surface those recommendations to the web interface. I used create next app in order to create the Next.js project, and I configured Tailwind CSS from the get-go for styling. I've kept the application as simple as possible by limiting the complexity of the interface. There's an input field to receive the prompt from the user, a grid view to show recommended books, and then a modal overlay to act as a single book view where we can read the description and see other book details. The JSX for the application contains a form element which contains a submission button and an input element with various attributes. The input field is most interesting because it's what receives the user's input. We store that in a value attribute as query. This query variable is a state managed in our component up at the top of this index file. When text changes in the input field, the setQuery function is triggered and the query state is updated. This is just regular React stuff. If this is new to you, check out a course in React or Next.js to get a better understanding of how it works. There's also some beautiful class tags that style the input field through the power of Tailwind CSS. The form element has an onSubmit that triggers a function called getRecommendations when the submission button is clicked. Let's go take a look at getRecommendations. 
The first thing is some lightweight validation that ensures the user has actually typed something into the input field. Then we can trigger a fetch call against API slash recommendations. Once we get a response, we extract the book data from the payload. If you look deeply enough at the results from search.py, we know we can get the list of recommended books from recommendations.data.get.book. We then store it in a state variable. And with this, we have the book recommendations data in the Next.js client application. Let's take a look at how we set up the API endpoint on our Next.js app that queries we v on our dataset. In the pages folder, there should be a directory called API, and within it is a recommendations.ts file that will be triggered when an HTTP request is sent to slash API slash recommendations. The recommendations.ts endpoint will extract the query from the request body and then pass it into the wev client as a near text object and query the book vectors in much the same way that search.py did. The result is then sent back to the client, which we've already set up to be stored in the state variable of the Next.js application. The recommendation grid appears with a list of books that come from the semantic search result from our near text query. We have these stored in a recommended books variable after a query is made. In the JSX of index, we map through recommended books, and this returns the relevant divs that represent the recommendations grid. The grid is styled in a flex wrap div so that they expand into the parent container and wrap around when a row is filled. As we map through those recommendations, we render book details to the screen, such as the book thumbnail, the book title, and a button to learn more about the book. When the button is tapped, we render a modal on screen. There's some logic that will select the book and put it into a state variable so that the modal knows how to display it. And we also set an additional state variable to force the modal to come on a screen. Let's briefly look at the modal mechanics. When the learn more button is clicked, the open modal function is triggered and receives the book details so that we know which one was selected and we set that book in the selected book state variable. We'll also have a state to manage the viewability of the modal. We'll call it modal is open. When this state is set true, the modal is rendered to the screen. This modal contains the thumbnail of the book, the author details, genre, average rating, published year, and description. And these are all rendered from the selected book state. Since we also have the International Standard Book Number, or ISBN, for this book, we can make a naive query against Amazon to show that book on an Amazon search result when clicked. This is just for fun. Lastly, we'll also include a close modal button that will close the modal from view. Okay. That's all there really is to using wev to create a simple recommendation system in a Next.js application. With the simple logic seen from this video, we prototyped a simple yet capable recommendation system using wev vector database. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you found it informative. Happy building with wev And if you have any questions, please share with us on our community Slack or the wev forums. The details are in the description below. See you next time.